Hey friend, welcome back to Bible Tract Echoes. I'm Mike McCurry, your host. All this week we've been focused on prayer, the Lord's Prayer to be specific, but we've been applying it to your life and to mine. My hope is that what we've spoken about has caused you to consider your own prayer life. We've got a lot to cover in a very short amount of time to do so. We begin in Matthew chapter number 6 and verse number 9. I'll read them, not quickly, but intensely. I want you to listen as I read aloud these verses as we conclude our week together. Let me ask you as we begin, how's your prayer life? Matthew 6 verse number 9. After this manner therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Now, we're going to do uh, about a 40,000 foot uh, Passover flyover of the last two or three verses of the Lord's Prayer. We spent a lot of time on our Father. We spent some time on which art in heaven. And then we spoke yesterday, hallowed be thy name. But we've got a lot to cover and we've got more places to go in the coming days days on this broadcast. So I don't want to shortchange prayer. I think in the coming days soon, we'll come back and get a little more granular, a little more detailed. Now let's dive in. Thy kingdom come. There we find it in verse number 10 of Matthew chapter number six. When's the last time I asked you that you've prayed for his return? If Christ were to come back today, would you welcome him? Or would you feel immense guilt? You know, we should be desirous to be united with those we love. I recall my dad being gone for a 12 month and a 15 month deployment to Iraq back in the day when he was in the military. He was in the army for 20 something years. And I remember him being gone. And I remember the joyousness of the reunion when he came back for good thy kingdom come. Have you prayed for his return recently? Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We continue on there in verse number 10. Has it ever occurred to you, I say this a little tongue in cheek, has it ever occurred to you that nothing has ever occurred to God? Again, these, these things that I'm set talking about and the notes I have today are coming directly from my prayer journal, my notes on prayer. He doesn't need to be told to do his will. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He doesn't need to be told to do his will. He can already do it. He has immense power to do so. But what a joy it must be to hear his children in agreement with his will. Do you have any hard-headed children, any stubborn children? Isn't it just so nice when they finally agree with you? I don't know what that's like because I have Emmy and Lucy. Yeah, I'm joking, I'm joking. They are just jewels, they're gems. I so enjoy being their father. But sometimes they can be a little bit like me. They can be a little obstinate. But what a joy it is when they get with the program. When they, uh, when they uh, agree and say, Dad, let's go do this thing that you were already planning on doing. That's a blessing. It doesn't happen often, but every once in a while. But in all seriousness, friend, let me ask you, have you ever agreed with God? When's the last time? Or are you constantly running counter to him? Thy will be done. Now, give us this day our daily bread. Why would I not pray this prayer? Well, there's a very specific reason. If you think you have a handle on life, if everything's under your control, and I'll put that in air quotes, under your control, because we truly can't actually control anything. When we think we've got a handle on everything, what was it the old songwriter said? I've got the world on a string sitting on a rainbow. That sounds well and it sings good, but it's not true. 
If you think you've got life by the tail and everything is going the way you want it to, friend, I've heard it put this way. It doesn't sound very encouraging, but it's true. You're either going into a storm, in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. That's not very encouraging, Brother Micah. I just told you it wasn't. It's the truth, though. Life comes at you fast, doesn't it? And sometimes there's difficulties of life that we, that we can't quite wrap our heads around. We can't wrap our mental faculties around. Our emotions can't. We're not in control. But when we stop and pray, give us this day our daily bread to a father that loves us. The Bible talks about if you were to ask, if an earthly child asks an earthly father for a piece of bread, will he give him a stone or a scorpion? No, absolutely not. If an earthly father knows how to take care of his children, don't you think the heavenly father knows how to take care of us? I hope, friend, that your prayer life, if you want to talk about if you want a proof to why you should have a daily walk with God, a daily prayer life, well, this part of the Lord's Prayer right here is uh, should be a proof enough for you. Give us this day our daily bread. Moving on, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's verse number 12. Have you ever heard of reciprocity? A lot of times we use that word when we're discussing the Second Amendment. Now, I'm not going to opine on this too strongly right now. You can draw your own conclusions and opinions on what the Founding Fathers meant. I know what I believe about it. We're talking about prayer right now. I'm not talking about firearms. But by way of illustration, there are states, it bounces around 37, 38, 39 states, that have what's called reciprocity. And if you get a concealed carry license in a particular state, let's say Pennsylvania, then there are often 37 or 38 other states that will allow you to conceal and carry your firearm in their state without getting one of their licenses. And it goes back and forth. If you get a license in another state, then Pennsylvania might allow you to carry in that state. There are some that don't allow reciprocity. But have you ever thought about reciprocity in your prayer life? Have you ever wondered why maybe you can't get past some besetting sins or some things, some sin debts, if you will, that just seem to keep strangling you, seem to keep sneaking up on you, just won't let you get victory in your life? Have you ever wondered if maybe it's because you're harboring bitterness and unforgiveness to someone that owes you a debt? You say, Brother Micah, that doesn't sound very kind. How dare you? Well, friend, the Bible here, Jesus commands us to pray this. Look at verse number nine. After this manner. Now that just that doesn't mean you just repeat the Lord's Prayer again and again and again. It's giving us an outline. It's giving us a, a concept, a, a way to pray. Verse number 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. It almost sounds like if we don't forgive our debtors, if we don't forgive those that have wronged us, if we don't forgive those that have caused us harm, it's going to be hard for him to hear our prayers. Forgive us our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's the beginning of verse number 13, the first half there. Could I encourage you, though? We prayed, God, don't lead us into temptation. What I've found most Christians' problems are or is that we lead ourselves into temptation. We do a pretty good job of finding our way into bad circumstances, don't we? I know it's true for my life. And then we scream and kick and cry and repent when we do something wrong or think something wrong, when we have set the stage and made it very easy for us to be tempted. For thine is the kingdom. This verse, verse number 13 ends, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, this Lord's Prayer, the model prayer, it begins with praise 
and it ends with praise. Our Father which art in heaven, indicating and acknowledging how high he is relative to us, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That sounds like praise to me. Acknowledging how great his name is, his names are, maybe I should say. And then it ends, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For me, what I strive to do, though often fail, I want to begin my prayer with praise. And I want to end my prayer with praise. You would be hard pressed to tell God how great he is too much. Praise and praise, beginning and ending. Friend, I'd ask you, if you don't already pray habitually, I'm not asking you to pray ritualistically or just because it's tradition. I'm asking you to make it part of who you are, the essence of who you are, to really grasp the gravity and the importance of prayer. And if you would, while you pray on your prayer list, consider adding Bible Tracks Incorporated and the McCurry family to your prayer list. We would greatly appreciate it. Now, as we end today, I've got a gospel track to tell you about. This gospel track right here is called Seven Questions. It's often shortened down to just that phrase, seven questions, but it says seven questions boys and girls ask. What are some of those seven questions? Well, I'm going to leave you on a little bit of a cliffhanger. You can go to BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. And you can not only order some of these gospel tracks, but you can also read the content. If you'd like more information about this gospel tract, maybe you have a vacation Bible school next summer. I know we're far away from next summer, but maybe you'd like to stockpile a few of these. Maybe you have a kid's Christmas activity that you know is coming up soon. You'd like to order some of these for maybe a harvest party or something along those lines. Order some of these questions, some of these tracks, if it can be a help to you. Seven questions that boys and girls ask. Remember, our gospel tracks are free and will remain so as long as I have any say in it. My prayer, as always, is that you have a great day for his glory. Thank you for tuning in all this week. I look forward to talking to you next week. Thank you for tuning in. God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample booklet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. That's 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 130, Dwight, Illinois 60420. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.